Hello everybody, it's me again with the second part of the series about geology as a career field. So the second part I'm going to talk about how to succeed as a geologist in your undergraduate degree. So that means you've chosen to take this path. If you haven't watched part one, definitely watch that first before you decide to study geology. But if you have decided to do it, this is the video for you and how to succeed as an undergraduate student in geology. So right from the start, I just want to tell you that ideally these steps should be taken that I'm going to outline here in this video. They should be taken from your freshman year. So starting at the very beginning. And if you're one of those lucky enough to know exactly what you want to do, you're a freshman, you're, you're gung ho, you're ready to go. That is the optimal time to begin applying these steps. But that being said, if you're anywhere else along in the process, it's never too late to start. And certainly if you don't start these steps, it's going to put you further and further behind. So the first thing you should do is just be serious about what you're studying. And where I kind of went wrong in this is I was doing a second career path. I was considering doing something else entirely. And I was kind of doing two things halfway, which is not, never the way to do things, especially something like geology. If you're going to do it, you really, really need to get into it and you need to get into it seriously. So don't put it on the back burner. Don't have it as a second option. If you're studying geology, this is your first option. This is the one thing that you're doing. Other ways that you can show that you're serious about geology, and, and this is going to help you make a good impression on the professors around you because that is going to be very important to get you to do some of the other steps later on. But show up to class on time. Sit up front. I know that's like a really cliche thing to say, but seriously, show up on time to class, sit up front, but don't sit up up front unprepared or else you're going to look like an idiot. Make sure you are prepared for class. So if there's a reading assignment, you've done the reading assignment. If there was a homework assignment, you've completed that and, and you understand it, right? So that is a very key part. So part of being serious about this major is showing up on time is being to class every day and being prepared in class. And your professors are going to take notice of that and that you want them to. The second thing I want to mention is that you need to make yourself known in the geology department. Make yourself known to other students. They're going to be really, I mean, you need to know these people because you're going to spend a lot of time with them. You're going to go in the field with them. You're going to camp with them. You're going to maybe travel internationally with them. It's good if you know these people and if you're and if you're on friendly terms with them. On top of that, they're going to be good for your network later on when you're looking for jobs. And if you were to ever try to change your job or to train change your career, at least or change companies or what have you, it's good to have all these connections. So make yourself known. Make yourself known to the other students. Make yourself known also to the professors. So don't just show up. I, I mentioned show up on time. Be prepared to class. But don't just do that. Anytime there's any gap in your knowledge, go to their office hours. Their office hours are there for a reason. Nobody goes to them. I guarantee you, you're going to find a spot. You're going to be able to find your professor and make time to sit down with them. And one, that's going to build a relationship with them. And two, they're going to be able to explain things to you. So you're really going to get a great grasp on the concepts in those courses. And I know they call those beginning courses like rocks for jocks or whatever. They're not super challenging, those first courses. But as you go on, you will be challenged. And it is not a super easy degree. So don't think that it is. There's a lot of deeply scientific concepts that you're going to need to get familiar with. And you're going to need to have some background. So if there's any gaps in your knowledge, make sure that you are visiting your professors during office hours. On top of getting to know the students and getting to know the professors, it's not going to hurt you to get to know the administrators. Just let yourself be known. The more people you know within the department, the better off you're going to be and the, and the more opportunities are going to open up for you and the less shy you're going to be, right? You're going to know people so it's not going to be hard to get out of your shell and talk to them and ask for other opportunities. So once you've shown yourself as a serious student and you've been prepared and you made a good impression on your professors, you've gotten to know a lot of people in the department and you've become friends with them genuinely. Once you've done that, it is time for you to seek out one of the professors or more if you want to, if you have the ability to do that, for research opportunities. So just one hint, if you're doing oil and gas, the best thing you can do is probably get in with a sedimentary or 
stratigraphy professor, someone al along those lines, because if you go on the hard rock route, so someone that's doing volcanology or igneous rocks or metamorphic rocks, it's not going to be as relevant to you in your future, but seriously, any research is better than no research. It's building that resume, it's showing that you're a serious student and that you're capable of, of doing great things in this career field. The, the best way you can do this is simply just by talking to the professors constantly. So even if you don't have questions, or even if you're not taking a class from that professor currently, feel free to visit them during office hours. That's what office hours are for. And talk to them. Tell them what your interests are. Tell them what, you're, what you would like to participate in, what your availability is. And ask them if they have anything going on. Even from the beginning, just express like you're willing to do anything. Maybe there's a master student that needs you to do some field work with them to carry their rock hammer, whatever it is, but you should do it. Anything you can get in on, do it. The more experience you get, the better. Trust me, geology is a classroom. Learn, you, know, you learn a lot in the classroom, but once you get out in the field, that's where you really get the learning. So the more you get out there, the farther ahead you're going to be, and it's going to pay dividends for you. Along the same lines as finding research is participating in publication. You need to try to get published in your undergraduate years, and that is a big deal. That's a really good thing for you to be able to do is get published, get on a paper. Doesn't mean you have to be the main author, but if you're participating with a professor in some research, or even if you help out in the field work, there's a good chance that your name will get on that research paper. So the more research you do, the more opportunities you find, the more people you talk to, the better off you're going to be, and you're going to be, uh, you're going to be able to add that to your resume. It's going to be a good thing. Trust me. You want publications on your resume as a geologist. It will really help you when you're talking to recruiters. Along the same lines as publication, the other thing you should try to do is present at conferences. So if, if you have the opportunity to do a, an oral presentation at a conference, all the better. But certainly, you should make some posters related to your research that you're working on with your professors and go attend the GSA conference. Or if you're doing oil and gas, do the AAPG conference. Whatever field you're in, go to a conference and present your research in poster form. This is going to get you in touch with recruiters, in touch with other people in industries that you're looking for this is a good opportunity for you and often poster presenters are the first ones that have access to recruiters so it's going to be to your advantage to present a poster at these conferences and a lot of times the school will pay for you to go so they'll play, pay for your travel your room and board they'll pay for the conference it's a very likely thing that if you're doing research with a professor you're not going to have to pay your way to these conferences so of course you should go right Something that's really important is that you focus on your presenting skills. So you're able to get in front of a group and present scientific information from start to finish in a clear way and in a way that you're not physically distracting. So you're not pacing back and forth. You're not saying um every other word. You're not doing awkward pauses or fiddling with your fingers. You need to practice presenting as an undergraduate student. Really hone those skills in. Maybe you film yourself. Maybe you get feedback. You're going to get opportunities in classes to present some research, maybe a research paper or some kind of presentation. But the more you do it and the more feedback you can get, the better off you're going to be. And you're going to take those skills to your graduate degree and into your career, and it's going to serve you well. The last thing I want to mention is that if you are lucky enough to have taken all of these steps, you've gotten research, you're presenting at conferences, you're doing everything you can to be a serious geology student, let's hope that you've networked, that your resume's out there, that you've talked to some people. If you're very lucky, you may get the opportunity to work alongside someone as an undergraduate student. So maybe you take 20 hours on as you know, working for an oil and gas company, depending on where you live, of course. But that is just something you want to consider. If it is at all possible for you to get an internship of some kind during your undergraduate, that would be huge, right? And a lot of times that comes during your, you know, your graduate work. So that's something to consider as well. So if you don't get an internship while you're in undergraduate school, 
don't worry too much. You'll most likely get that as a graduate student, but do all of these other things and you're gonna, you're gonna be a better candidate for that. Thank you guys so much for watching Giono. It's great to have you as listeners and as watchers. Please go ahead, if this video has been helpful to you or the last video or the next videos or what have you, if you've liked this content, please give me a like on this video. Comment below with anything that you have questions about or anything you want to uh, discuss. I'd be happy to do that. Let me know and thank you so much for watching Giono.